All right. This week's <laughs> program design review is brought to you on the fly. <laughs> no. Um, brought to you by Travis and Cindy Barnes Journey Fitness. That's right. You're going to see some blank boxes. We're going to fill them in together as we go this week. It's just uh, one of those weeks. Uh, it's had a lot going on. So uh, we still want to get this done for you. Um, I'm going to say a couple of things that uh, maybe you'll be thinking of stuff even before we add it in there. So as a coach, a coach that we want to be engaging, you're not an observer, you're in the session. So you have uh, three seconds to deliver your 3C method. Does this person need a coaching cue or correction or just a simple compliment? Because if they're doing well, doesn't mean that they still shouldn't be engaged and recognized. So what is it when they need a uh, coaching cue or correction? I think you also have a uh, very limited amount of time to decide, is this a strength activity where I should be challenging the weight or even challenging the range of motion? Is this a pace activity where I should be challenging how fast somebody's doing it? Or is this a technical movement to where I really need to focus on how I'm teaching the technique of this exercise? Uh, this week's workout is in, uh, it, it's a Tabata AMRAP. I was going to say AMRAP Tabata, but the AMRAP's at the bottom there. Uh, so one of my favorite types of workouts, it's got the cardio and it has the strength. So we'll talk a little bit about each thing, um, starting at the top with your warm up. All right. So, uh, have those fun warm ups in your, you know, there's a lot of new people coming in. Uh, Andy was just mentioning how the move it, move it was a big hit. Um, could be the warrior, uh, and we'll throw a few in there, but just make sure that, you know, you're, you're getting them with something that is a little out of the norm. And they realize that what makes our facility different is that we put the fun in functional fitness, right? We have to deliver on our brand promise. Super important to do that. So um, let me put that right in there for you. Move it, move it, warm up. Or like I say, maybe even just do the warrior if the, the uh, movement is not for you. Then as we get down to the dumbbell thrusters, this of course is a weight exercise. It's a strength activity. Why? Because you're even using your legs to press it. So you want to tell them that they're not pressing from their shoulders, but pressing from their feet. So with this one, it would be strength. We also usually put in here in red forms of edutainment or engagement, right? So what is the edutainment when you're doing like a, a blast of the ceiling? It's probably some sort of lightning sound effect, right? You know, because it's... Uh, it just sounds cool and it's fun. It's powerful and people laugh and they smile and they have a good time. And if you want to figure out how to have exercise adherence and get people to their goals, well, figure out how to make them smile more in your sessions, right? Uh, so maybe a lightning sound effect. All right. Then, uh, uh, so what we say here when it's strength is we might say challenge the weight, right? All right. I'll put that in there instead of just saying strength. Uh, the super band lateral shuffles. Now you've seen the happy Gilmore and that's where we kind of swing at the end. This one is focused on keeping it in the center of your body. Okay. So this is a technique exercise. And so how I engage as a coach is I'm over there reminding them not to let it slip this way, you know, cause it's pulling them towards the anchor point as they're moving out, but you're focused on keeping them centered. And then you might also focus them on the pace. Right. But I would say that this is technique and pace here. Right. And Every day we hustling, right? Every day we shuffling, shuffle, shuffle, hustle that muscle, right? So technique and pace, and we'll just put hustle there in red. All right, boom. I hope that you're guessing as we come along. What's the next one all about, right? We got a kettlebell ski swings, okay? So you're in that narrow stance. You got the kettlebells on each side, all right? What's the song? I say hip hinge, you say, hooray. And you know, we also like that song by Savage that is swing, right? So um, with this one, of course, it is a kettlebell swing. That's a powerful movement. So you might say it's pace. You might even say that it's weight, right? Um, technique, right? You got to have your technique first, right? If they have bad form, they shouldn't be swinging. The deadlift is actually the regression to the kettlebell swing. You know, you if you can't do a good deadlift, you shouldn't be doing a swing. Then we watch the kettlebell to see, does this kettlebell, um, you know, are they just floating it? Is it, is it too easy? Um, you'll see that they're doing it with their shoulders if the kettlebell is pointing down. <clears throat> if the bottom of the kettlebell is pointing to the, towards the floor, that means that they're lifting it with their shoulders instead of moving it with their hips. Um, so, you know, we want to challenge them. So on this one, you know, 
uh, technique is first, right? You know, if we were to kind of have a little bit of a, a hierarchy, then we would say technique first, uh, then we would say weight. Um, in the red, we could say hip hinge, hooray, we could say savage swing, right? I like to play that song, you know, when Cindy gets up there. Sometimes I, I really embarrass Cindy. No, we have a good time together. Uh, she knows it's coming to members laugh, but when she's bending and it's a an exercise designed to work the backside, it's like, oh my God, Becky, look at her butt. Because everybody knows they're working on their posterior right now. So it's kind of a fun thing because you, you know, who doesn't want a, a good butt? In fact, it's many people's goal when they come to the gym. Oh, I want to look good. thing is two tone of a butt. I want to look good naked or I want a good butt or whatever, you know? So that's a, that's a common goal. Uh, the agility ladder hopscotch. Okay, so two feet in, two feet out. This is obviously a pace activity. Most of the time when you're in 20 seconds, you're going to find a lot of common pace activities, right? So you're challenging the pace. Um, you can advance this. All right, so advancing it, you could do one foot in, two feet out. You know, you can get a more um, kind of uh, an agility challenge. Um, if you want to add a squat to it, you can, right? If you want to give them a ball to carry through, Again, you're the engaged coach. You're not the observer. So if you want to give them something to hold as they're going through the ladder, that's just going to give them a little added resistance and it's going to increase their heart rate and increase their calories burn. So pace is the answer there. The jam ball 180 slams. Okay, so this is a big movement. All right, so they're getting their spin. Um, I have a good time with that one. I'm usually like when people are spinning around, it's almost like a dance move. So I'll be playing something like Brick House or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. With the boys be boys slam 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 onyx yeah that's another good one you know so i know um i think jeremy originally added that to the playlist there and he's played it in some demos there so slam onyx okay um i will say this the jam ball slam is not about weight it's about a pace it's about a speed right. and too often people think oh well what if i could spin around and slam this 60 um i can tell you we're, we're on a Second floor, we don't want that going on in our facility, right? We have a basement below us. Um, but we really want people to understand that this is a power activity. It's an explosive activity. It shouldn't be about, uh, you know, anchoring yourself with too much weight. So right. slam, onyx, um, so when you're challenge. Demoing, say it, say it, say it. Yeah, challenge the pace on that. All right. So that is um, your Tabata portion. Then over here, we got uh, an AMRAP. So we got the kettlebell bent over goblet row. Now, these are something, that, remember, when we uh, highlight in orange, when we do the orange highlights, that means you might have to question your facility, should these exercises be in the same order, in the same place? Because we all have to look at our layout and say, is this how it works for our facility? Um, the kettlebell bent over goblet squat. Okay, so if I'm looking at our facility, um, the first three could go there, but then I have to look at the other two. So then I have a plyo box, a centric uh, step down, I have a diamond push up, and then I have a stability ball, uh, underhand front raise. But then in my facility, where I would normally do the dumbbells, I also have a TRX suspended pull up, right? So I might have to switch something around here. And then the C sit leg lift, and then the dumbbell front squat, front squat, sorry. Go ahead, Cindy, what were you pointing out? I was just saying, actually, in number one, you can't do the super band assisted. Right, right, right. Yeah, so I read super band, but the assisted has to go to an anchor point by the ropes, right? right? Mm -hmm. So if I took this, uh, I need to get this over to my ropes, right? Right. And so um, with that, we're going to probably have to move. There's another dumbbell front squat one. Yeah. So we'll probably have to do something like that. We'll uh we'll change out our number threes for sure. Um move that around a little bit. Um could we could we have number one and number two both have uh dumbbell exercises? I mean we could kind of land them right there near the dumbbell rack. We could do that if we wanted to. Would we want to? One, two. So based on our facility, then we would have the kettlebell bent over row. We'd have the laying leg raise. And then uh, just to make it small or easy, the amount of things we have to move, we would put the lighter dumbbells down there for the stability ball, 
underhand front raise. And my suggestion for that would be maybe a little uh, pink, raise your glass on that uh, if you want to have some fun engagement. Uh, also, when it comes to engagement, don't forget about the power of touch when you're coming along and somebody's needing to squeeze their shoulders, uh, the leg raise to the hip raise, giving them a target for their feet when it comes to uh, you know, making sure they're going straight up and elevating those hips. Then uh, we get over to our second AMRAP station and we have the plyo box eccentric single leg step down. So they're really focusing on the lowering phase. Doing an eccentric movement takes a rubber band effect out of the muscles. Too often it's like a spring back and forth. And so therefore you're not really activating those muscle fibers as much as you would if you go slowly on the uh, down, the eccentric portion. Uh, then the TRX suspended pull-ups. All right. Uh, lots of uh, fun to be had with that. Lots of variety. You know, it's really about how little you use your legs on that. Maybe you just sit Indian style and use your entire upper body if you're one of the Jedis. And then uh, the dumbbell front squat. Okay. With that one, you know, we're, we're challenging the weight and we also might put their heels onto an orange pylon. So then that way they can have, or whatever you're using to elevate heels in your facility so they can have a good straight back for their squat. Then you get into the uh, diamond push-ups for your third station. Uh, like Cindy likes to say, if this bothers you, never bothers anyone to have a bigger diamond, right? So if this bothers your wrist, make a bigger diamond. Uh, the C-sit uh, leg lifts, right? Uh, so that's a leaning back. <laughs> Shout out to Samir. Can barely see him past his feet in the video. Uh, <laughs> and then you have your super band assisted hinge. Uh, as Andy pointed out this week, it's a great way to teach people the form of that type of hip hinge, that type of deadlift. So it's, it's really helping them to target because too often we see people squatting and doing other things, right? Then you have your burpee builder relay. I could easily highlight this one orange as well because, <clears throat> you know, depending on the space of your facility and depending on how many people are in your facility depends on whether or not you accomplish a relay. If you don't accomplish a relay, maybe what you'd like to do instead is do an EMOM. So that would be every minute on the minute is how that's spelled, E-M-O-M, -M. it's an acronym there. And uh, you would give them a minute to complete five squats, five squat thrusts, and five burpees, and then say, you earn your rest with whatever time's left, you run it out. And so then you can determine how much time you have left in your workout. Is it three sets of those? Is it four sets? Is it five sets? And that might be another way to handle it if you did not choose to do a relay. Cool. I don't just like it, Travis. I love it. Awesome. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> All right. There it is. Your Friday, um, Monday, Wednesday program design review. So.